Hey, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. On last episode, part one of the abandoned Chevy S10 behind me, a guy did get her running after 16 years sitting outside. In this episode, I'm gonna see if I can get her to just scoot around on its own power. This could get pretty interesting. Insert adverb your choice. Well, I think the first thing you guys should do today is just, you know, twist on her and see if she barks off again today. I was a little surprised at how quickly she came back around after sitting for 16 years, but I guess I shouldn't. I just got my Pontiac Fiero running not too long ago, and that sat for almost two decades and almost immediately ran. These Iron Dukes, I can personally say now, are pretty dang good. I gotta figure out today if this is a Borg Water T4 or the old Zuzu S101. They're both four speeds, but I'm gonna show you a super quick way to determine which one you got. They came in both flavors. And then we'll eventually just jam it in gear and see what we got. She's rolling free, so basically it becomes a question of does the clutch work or is it smoked? And how's that old rear end doing? I know I don't have brakes, but you don't need them for a test run. You just, you just ease it around. I think the old cerebellum is just blocking out the memory package on this here because it's really, but listen, listen. I've pulled now, I think over 300 cars out of places that you would just shake your noggin at. And this is one of the worst. I mean, the smell, I, I can bite it, literally. I think, I think I'm gonna need a mask. Holy Moses. I wish you folks had smell-o-vision. It's kind of smell shifted on me a little bit. I had it just sitting here for a couple days. It's more of a burnt transmission fluid and cat vomit today. I mean, it's really bad. This is just saying danger. Everywhere you look, it's just, it gets worse and worse. I think I'm gonna start in here, try to clean this up a little bit, because I'm gonna have to be sitting in here to run the clutch and the old ignition stick. And I wanna limit the amount of known and unknown diseases I get. Important update. I don't know how to do that thing that scrolls, so that's what this means. Well, two updates. One, I just lost 16, 17 months of my life, but that's fine, it's an S10. Two, as I'm cleaning this out, thinking, what am I gonna do with this thing? I was talking to my brother last night, Krang, also known as Chris, He's the guy that doesn't talk, wears bibs, overalls, you know. He needs a vehicle. His Tahoe is just on the last leg, and he drives just as much as I do every day to work. So I think if I can get this girl buttoned up pretty decent, running and driving, put a little shine on her, I might just give it to him. Of course, he doesn't know, because he would just say, which means, no, I don't want to take nothing from you, but man, he's, I'm going to stop this now because it's burning, but just that thing's still going. He's helped me out a lot, and I always come to his place and use his garage and tools and everything else, so 
I think it's the least I can do. She's bound to get 30, 22, 31, 27 miles per gallon. It'd be a good commuter. I think I'm going to cut this here seat cover off. She's shot. And I can wad up some of this stuff and we can see what we got going on. But I think I'm making some ground up here. I'll get you in here and show you. Nope. That's still really bad. Great. 27 minutes later, we're making barely any improvements here. But I can see that we got rubber floors. That's that's a good thing. Guy needs them, especially for the winter in North Dakota. That's where his brother's from, you know. So I'm going to cut this here seat cover off. Get that out. See what we got going on. Guy can always put in a new one. She's a little worn under there, but the smell on that thing is just... I give it an F. Look at this nice color combination. I really wish they wouldn't have changed that. We had a nice dark brown and then this tan, beige, sand, light tan, light brown color here. I kind of, I'm digging that. Maybe the pressure washer would just... Might bring this back around is what I'm trying to say. I have no idea what this is. I think it's what's left of like a five gallon bucket or ice cream pail. There's not much of it. I got on the side tracks. I spent a good 19 months back here, but it's coming around actually. Took a rue river and scraped out all these river laders. Tailgate is just, she's jammed up and also rotting. So I'm just gonna leave it, I think. What she needs now is just a pressure wash. Also, I found children's socks. That's about a handful of cars now I'm finding socks in. It's becoming slightly concerning. I do like this country and western pattern, but she's gotta go. Well, what's this stuff? It came out, I guess. Just needed to lean on it. Oh, we got more underneath somehow. I just never seen such a thing. Oh. oh. Yeah. Ooh, we got fuses? No. Dang it. She's looking a little better, but I gotta bring the mouse sucker through here again, just touch it up. Took the steering wheel cover off. Now that's stickier than a cabin fly trap, but I think we'll go ahead and, oh, put a new one on there eventually. I'll just keep on cleaning. I think I got about 17 feet here if I can get the old seat lever to work. <coughs> gotta bring that back. Both my brother and I, you know, we got, we got the legs. Oh no, floor checker failed. Yep. We got some rust. I'm just gonna pretend I didn't do that, nor see the parts of floor falling on the ground. It's fine. For whatever reason, I just kind of started looking at this thing. It's got so much mold and moss just everywhere on this truck. Probably worse than the F2 Shitty, AKA F2 Mossy, AKA F250. Do you guys think I should pressure wash this thing or just, kind of let her roll as is. If I pressure wash her, we're probably gonna have to do some license plated and a little bit of tss, tss, but we can also just leave her. I don't think he'd mind driving it like this. I'm really not sure if he ever washes his vehicles, to be honest. I was trying to get the seat to go back. I got that side back, but there's a wire that works its way across here. It's there. And then when you pull the lever, it flips the pin out over here and it slides back. And I kept getting a weird smell. And it turns out there's just, I got a bunch of mold just right in the face, basically. So you want to get some mold deleter 500 on here and just bring it in like this and just let it sit. And what that's going to do is just bring this all the way down. See, it's turning black already. Come back with a rag and this is going to wipe right off. I'll show you in about five minutes. I, I know what you're thinking. This can't be the same truck. But guess what it is. That's just how it goes, feller. I've had a really productive day. I mean, 
I could stop here and just be fine with it, but we better just keep going. See if she scoots around, I guess. If you've been watching the channel a while, you know that my brothers don't really talk too much, specifically Krang. He's just, he's a quiet fellow. But we're in a group text and we don't really even say anything in the group text. We just send pictures all day, seven days a week. I did send one picture of this truck. I normally send pictures of my projects and they just make fun of me and wonder why I do what I do. Great. But anyway, sent him a picture of this and he sent something about Vietnam, which means if it's got a four cylinder, should run. But now I gotta go dark. I just, I'm not gonna send them any more pictures of this. It's really coming around. I don't think if I touched anything, he'd slip right into this right now, but I think I could even bring it around a little bit more. Smells getting better. This has never happened to me. I literally vacuumed paint off of the door panel here. That was fun. Might try it over on the other one. Probably not, too lazy. But anyway, this is completely full. Got to empty that out. Found some goodies. Got some Walmart oil. I'll keep that top shelf. Good entry doormat. This belt's going to go on the truck because that's better than the one that's currently on the engine. And I have no idea, but I'll probably keep it. So now I think we're good enough. I could jump in here, fire this thing up, and see if the clutch later is actually even doing anything. So she's been sitting about a week now while I finished up the rocker panels and floor and the crew cab over there. Let's see if it fires up again. Almost immediately. It's a pretty loyal old bird, not gonna lie. It's really starting to smell better actually. I might even just, I'm gonna have to sit in it and just get used to it. <sighs> Let's get this show on the road. I'm just gonna fire this thing, fire this thing up and Try to stab it in gear and see what happens with the clutch. Well, basically, we've got no clutch or a horn. Dang it. I guess it's time to get her up in the air and let's figure out what transmission this is. And we got a blown hydraulic line or something even worse. Great. I just don't fit these good. Well, let's scooch under here and see what transmission we got. Okay, yep, mm -hmm. that's an Isuzu, can tell right away. So see how this is just one case. There's no separated bell housing. The Borg Warner would be a bell housing and then the trans part would bolt to that. This is just one unit here. So this is the old Isuzu. This is called the slave cylinder. There's a master cylinder up on the firewall. There's just a hydraulic little rod in here that shoots forward when you hit the clutch pedal. And that moves the clutch fork. And then there's a bleeder valve up here, which I'm going to try to break loose and most likely snap this off. Which means I'll be breaking this fitting, replacing this line, replacing this, and replacing the master cylinder. So everything is just going fine.
But this is where we want to start, as we're assuming we don't have any clutch pressure. I wouldn't know why, to be honest. How did it get so... It's just not looking good under here. Oh, the exhaust is just right after the Cadillac converter. She's just snipped all the way off. Kind of Wi-Fi from there to there. Got the bleeder out. 13 M&Ms. Derek's Tech Tip 1216. Make sure your bleeders are clean on old vehicles before you start bleedolating on them. Brakes, clutch, what have you. This could be the whole problem for your system not bleeding. I'm gonna shoot some brake rejuvenation spray down this. Hit the clutch a couple times, get some fluid squirting down there, drop this in. Then we're gonna bleed it, but I don't have anyone to help. Luckily, I've got a clutch bleeder 200 sitting over here to help out. Pretty good shape. Ran her through the bench mounted cheek poker and she looks brand new. And you can tell they work because of the way that they are. Good enough. Make sure your reservoir is full, which by the way is French for wooden paddle. I already overfilled mine, but what I did was pumped it a couple times. And that made sure I had fluid coming out on the bottom. And also that I filled the system full of air. So now I'll cap this off. We're gonna slowly build some pressure and bleed it down below. My clutch bleeder 200 is pretty loyal. Plus I don't have to pay work comp on her. Just jam that down like this. You don't wanna pump these clutch pedals. Down once, tss, bleed. Up, down again, tss, bleed. It's a long task, but it works fine. Remember to keep an eye on your wooden paddle here. You run this puppy dry, you're starting all over again. Oh, see, I gotta put a little in already. You just need to stay on top of it. So I'm up here on the master cylinder. Had to crack a line down here. And I'm gonna try to bleed this first and then we'll get below and try it again. What is that now? Just this. That's the pits of getting air in the system when you break this stuff up to get her cleaned up. Is getting it back out just takes a little time. Well, I think a guy has stopped in his tracks deader than Elvis. I just can't get enough pressure out of that slave cylinder to do nothing. I've bled the master cylinder, the lines. I've bled it multiple different ways, including gravity. And just, she's not doing it. I think there's a check valve in there that's slowly releasing pressure. So as I'm bleeding it, nothing's happening other than just sucking wind back in. Called a parts store, of course they can't get nothing till tomorrow and they have 17 different flavors. I don't know. There's three of them, they're 14 bucks, I ordered all three. I'll just return the other two. So I guess she's gonna sit just like this till Tamara and we'll figure out which one is which. It's probably gonna be bore diameter or length is gonna be the biggest difference. I'm sure they're both cast iron, but we'll see you in the morning. We'll see you late morning Early afternoon. Hmm. That's more like it. Nothing like a roast beef sandwich. I don't care who you are, but you gotta get the horsey sauce on it. I got in two different cylinders here. One's a luck, and the other one's a perfection, I guess. This is the old one here, and as I suspected, you look inside here, that seal's just blown out. So we were trying to build pressure and she was just leaking out on the front end here. These two have different rods here. So I used the dial it up caliper, figured out the bore or the width of this one and the perfection one with the random part number seems to be the closest, even though the body isn't the same size as that. But I think we've got the same fitting size. So that's just going to have to try to work. I'm going to grab a quick bite here and then we're going to get back to her. Well, that cylinder is in. And you could tell by the 74 gallons, I've just been bleeding on it. In fact, almost this hole here can. And it ain't working. I get pressure built up and she leaks off again. And when I bleed the master up here, what was that now? Something fell down here. Dang it. Anyway. I get a little bit more pressure and I'm just flustered with myself because a guy can only figure on that the master 
is in the same condition as the slave was. So of course, the feller called around and I can get one, but not until 4.45 p.m. And Well, right now it's, what is that? I don't know. Taking the other one out right now, uh, late. And it's pretty straightforward. There's just a little pin. There's a rod that comes up to the old clutch lever. And then there's two 13 millimeter bolts on the inside firewall. The problem I had is this hose. And this goes down to the cylinder below the truck, up to this one. This is corroded. So the nut wanted to spin with the line. So I had to go down and undo the line and just flop this thing around in the truck. And that little task took me about 20 minutes. So now I'm gonna put this in the cheek poker in here, see if I can clean it up enough to get the nut to spin on the line. Otherwise, I'll just get a copper line and uh, make my own. So as I'm working on cotton today, by the way, that's its nickname now, sat next to a field all those years, I'm getting ready for a revival, so loading up my trusty totes, gas tank, battery, stuff like that. And I'm also, oh, there's that bolt, dang it. I'm also over here working on the crew cab a little bit. Started undercoating it, and she's looking pretty good. And then next I'll get in here and paint the frame. Just pressure washed this not too long ago, and that was a mess, but it's worth it. Get the frame nice and clean so that paint lays down nice. Guy got the looking in here and the line from the reservoir down to the old master cylindre. She's just rotten like that tomato movie. And it had zip ties around her, so someone's already been into that before. Surprised I missed that. But I'm going to replace that line too while I'm at it. Mazel. And I got everything ready. I just got to pull that out now and pop the new one in. Should just take a couple minutes. Let's see if it comes on out now. Wow, what is this in the way? What is this now? Is this wires or something? Feels like I shouldn't break it, whatever it is. She's clipped in. All right, why would they do that? Just bring it, bring it back here over the top like this. I just I'm I'm limited to one hand here I can't Jessica I need help I just bring this up and ease it down how do you fit it in here though honestly you gotta bend this do we dare oh she's flexy and then just bring it around like this bring it up sideways tickle on it bring it there well Looks like that seal is proper shot as well and the old boot tray came off with her. It's probably saveable. Well, it is went on ahead and be a couple days later now. Finally got the parts I need. This was supposed to come in at 4.45, but wouldn't you know it, after supper and a couple mountain sodas, it was 6.36. I decided just to scoot home at that point. Also, this here, Clutch hydraulic line is just a bear and a half to find. Eventually found a Dorman part number. They don't make it anymore. cross reference that to another part number. Can't find it. Did eventually find a brake best brake line, but once you know, it's the clutch line. So now that I got these two, this should be the last of the clutch later, as long as the actual clutch isn't bad. Probably is. Pop these in and see what we got going on well the master cylinder she's physically applied but I'm having issues in the cabin here there's a clutch rod that comes up to the pedal and it's tight in there so what I've done is I got the old vice grips on it of course and I'm twirling my Leatherman around here and that's slowly pressing that on I could take a drill and waller that rod out but then every time you press the pedal, there'd be a little bit of slop there. Plus some gravel roads, where my brother's gonna be driving this a lot. You know, it's just gonna be down there shaking. And what he would probably do is just stomp that clutch pedal until it just swung through the floor to get it to stop rattling. So to prevent that from happening, I'm gonna try to go this way first. 
And then she'll just eat and self-clearance down there. Guy's got her bled. I can hear that clutch fork just a swing in there, you know. Eh -oh, eh -oh. So we'll jump in, fire it up, and see if we can grab a gear on her. The guy does wonder if this will still even start. I was worried about this, but I didn't want to say anything. It can happen where you store these manuals up for a while. A lot of people recommend you store them with the clutch pedal down. And the reason is the clutch gets hermetically sealed into the flywheel there. And I think that's exactly what we've got going on. I'm going to pop the inspection cover off down below. There's one on the side so you can make sure that the slave cylinder is operating. And if it is, which I can hear that it is, then we've got a stuck clutch, basically. This is starting to get inconvenient. I know you can't see, so just follow along if you can. Took that cover off in there, and sure as sheep's wool, I can see that clutch fork moving. There's no big inspection cover on these S101s, so I can't get in there and manually force the flywheel open. So we're going to have to try something different. The more er, properest redneck way to do this, get her outside somewhere safe, you know, your neighbor's driveway or back road. Jack the back end up, start it in gear, and just bring her all the way up. And then just start pressing the brake a little bit here, a little bit there. And you're trying to get, you know, odd and even forces working in there. And that clutch should break free. Problem is, I don't have any brakes in the rear. Well, the vehicle. So we're gonna do it the mostest redneckiest way, which is just feed her the onions. I'm gonna bring her all the way up in the RPM spectrum, let off the gas, and just let momentum kind of bring us down. And I think we can make a racetrack around the shop here, and I'm just gonna keep bringing it until the cops get called. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I got you hooked right onto my face. That way you can really just get in here with me. And basically, everything that feels wrong in a normal situation is exactly what we're going for here. First gear, let's go. Let's go again. Well, first drive. Everything's going good. Make sure you keep the clutch down. And then you just gotta, you know, this is this guy's property. I gotta just ease through this part. And then we'll feed it right here. Bring her down, bring it up, bring it down, bring it up, bring it down. did not work and it's a nice truck but probably just not worth pulling the transmission <sighs> I'm gonna just put the thinking cap on for a while maybe I got to get her up on jack stands run her up to 127 miles an hour I don't know just let me just let me think a little bit for Pete's sake I can't know everything right now well, she's been a couple days now. Guy did go on ahead and get it. She's just shift latent like you wouldn't believe. The clutch was stuck to the flywheel. Yeah, what I ended up doing 
is getting her running at a good clip. I think I was in third gear. Put a jack under the big tire so it wouldn't turn. And then you could see the burnt rubber on this. I just put it under the tire and jerk up and down on it so it gave the old thrust on the drive line. And it popped. Also, I had a fire extinguisher go off in the bed of my truck. Thanks, Tommy. It's just, it's everywhere. Let's go for a spin. What is, what do we got going on here? So, get that up there. You don't need weather stripping. Come on. It's fine. It's just a little cold. Nope, it's warmed up. Here we go. See? Reverse. Easy. Oh, no brakes. You're right about that. See, just shifts like a hot fork through asparagus. Since I got no bumper or license plate or insurance, I think we just run her down the highway a little bit. Makes sense to me. Uh, uh. Oh, she's a torquey devil. Second, severe miss. Oh, came out of it. Severe miss again. Right back out of it. I got some digitals going on. Other than having two spare tires on the right side, I mean, she wants to just go in the ditch. Drives fine. Speedometer works. Check engine light. It's going. I'm on. No, I'm not. I'm back. I'm off again. So I don't think it's important. We'll just ignore it. I suppose a guy should test out this Hoosier back there. See if she grips up at all. I don't know. Oh, all the smoke went in here. Can't see, but I do like that smell. Well, the Hoosier did okay, I guess. She was about two seconds from popping. This concrete is just not even. But there we have it. The old girl, she runs, she drives after 16 years. Part three, you can't miss it. We're going to pressure wash this thing, get all the moss and mold off of it, bring the shine down, really clean up the interior, and just keep going down the list of things to do. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.